Joy Sports Checks have revealed Black Stars coach Kwesi Apia will be released from his position from the national team on Friday. I never thought uh, it would be so soon. Sometimes you need to be away for people to recognize just how good you were. We didn't say we were sacking him. We said we were part and company. On this note, I have the singular honor to introduce to you the reappointment and the new coach for the Black Stars, Mr. James Isiapia. My name is Benedict Owusu, and in this film, I explore the various factors which led to the dismissal of James Kusiapi as coach of the Black Stars and why the same team which fired him has employed him again as coach of the team. Kwisiapia played as a left back for Asante Kotoko between 1983 and 1993. Apia played for the Black Stars for five years. As a coach, Kwisiapia received technical training from English clubs Manchester City and Liverpool. He was Ghana's assistant coach between 2008 and 2012. Some people become coaches immediately after their footballing careers. I think that um, if you were Kwesi Apia in the way you were, then you've, you've got to go back to his background as a player and everything. Everywhere he's been, he's been considered a natural born leader, not by what he says, by just the sheer respect that he has among everybody. So he was Kotoko captain for an incredibly long time, Kotoko coach at some point, Blaska stars captain for a long time. He walks into a room of his colleagues and the respect is palpable in many ways. <laughs> Apia worked under two expatriate coaches Milovan Ravaj and Goran Stavanovic for four years. Some few days after the Africa Cup of Nations in Gabon, the Ghana Football Association parted company with Israeli trainer Avram Grant. Names of coaches came up for the vacant coaching job, but Kwesi Apia was appointed as head coach of the team once again. It was after Plavi, Goran Stefanovic left and uh, the board thought that um, Kusepia has been working under several coaches and given what he had done under Plavi even before him, the board thought that it was not time for him to be handed the mantle because he has proven during trainings and match preparation during matches and the rest that he was ready for the top job and that was when the FA decided to give the job to him. If you spend the period that he spent assisting, uh, first he was a um, uh, rival before Stevanovic, over a four year period he seemed to have known the team inside out, the players respected him, he knew his stuff uh, as we would have noticed uh, in the qualifiers that he oversaw. And then I thought the time it was perfect. There's really no perfect time for any such thing. But a four-year apprenticeship, I reckon, sometimes is enough based on the qualities you define. It's not every assistant who goes on to become the boss, but I think he proved over the period and over, over the period that he's proved since 2013 that it was good enough to hand him the job. He's a colleague. He's a celebrated coach I've worked with. We've been so, 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 so close. And uh, he has happened to take the first first Ghanaian coach to take Ghana to the World Cup. Yes, and uh, fortunately for him, he's coming back again. I think Ghanaians were calling for me. It's not because of me. It's because of the little work that I did. You know, if, and that's what I'm talking about. I was not looking at Ghana at that time. I was looking at Ghana next five, ten years. 
what should we gain from these players that we're bringing in? And it's about people recognizing the work that I did by bringing a whole lot of young players, you know, to make the team. And for me, a team is a good team when there's competition in the team. When you don't have competition in the team, everybody relaxes and plays as he wants. He was then given a two-year contract with the benchmarks of qualifying the team to the Africa Cup of Nations in 2013 as well as the FIFA World Cup in 2014. Under his leadership, the senior national team qualified for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, making him the first black African coach to take the country to the World Cup. Definitely gave him the target of, as usual, winning the trophies before him, and uh, qualifying the team to the World Cup. Mm. Those were the immediate targets given to him. Um, and as we go in tournament, you don't expect Ghana to go into a tournament like the Africa Cup of Nations and not expect to bring the trophy home. But also, there was the need, having qualified for the 26-2010 World Cups, there was a need to also continue the tradition. And uh, that was also added to him. And also to develop local talent for the national mm. team and invigorate the squad in the wake of the fact that several players who had played in the 26 and 2010 World Cup were on the wane. So there was the need for him to um, you know, deliver on that front. And I would say that um, on that basis, given the players he discovered for the national team players, he gave opportunities, opportunities to in the national team are now today some of the key players mm. in the national team. And a lot happened in Brazil which gave Coach Kisiapia a sleepless night. From players fighting officials to government flying $3 million in cash to Brazil to pay appearance fees all the players and avert a potential boycott to some unpleasant comments made by Kisiapia during post-match interviews but was he to blame for all of these unfortunate events? OTJ doesn't think so. I think the biggest tragedy is that we allowed the events of the World Cup in Brazil to, to mask everything that happened. I think it's a tra tragedy because I'm more than convinced that the events in Brazil was not a reflection on Kosia Pierre's personality or his know-how as a coach. I think it was more a reflection of the chaos uh, of our organization, the greed of players, uh, our inability to plan properly. I've covered many World Cups. I've not seen a single World Cup where we allowed money to consistently just overshadow everything. In 2006, it wasn't Ratu Medjikovic who made money issues easy. The organization of the team made the money issues easy. In 2010, we made the players the central focus, which gave Ratu Medjikovic, uh, sorry, Milovan Raivat, mm -hmm. all the, the, the peace of mind to prepare the team and focus solely on the football. That was when the team could say, we don't like our camping base where we are. We want to go somewhere else. And they are moved within a, a, a few minutes to the Sun City Hotel, paid the best money, treated and fitted like kings, and the coach got his status spot on. What we had in Brazil was consistently allowing times when the coach needed to train players and the rest to be dominated by meetings over money. It had never happened. Never had I seen a Black Stars go into a major tournament where everything centered around the money. And I think it's a bit disingenuous that we sort of seem to blame Kwasi Apia for that. He didn't keep the money, he didn't have to fly the money. He, it basically was not his fault that these things degenerated that way. But did anything good at all happen when he was coach of the team from the period of 2012 to 2014? Kwisiapia was criticized immensely by some football pundits for introducing young and inexperienced players into the team. For those critics, this is one of the reasons why the team failed to impress. I just think he was trusting young players a bit more. Everybody speaks about his so-called bad relationship with the IUs, but he was the one who gave Jordan more opportunities than anybody else did. It's true that it was Goran Stevanovic who introduced Jordan into the Black Stars, but Kwesi Apia gave him a lot more responsibility 
than any coach ever did. Um, I like how much more responsibility he gave the likes of Christian Achu. He trusted players in a way few people had done. And, and, and over a period, I think he basically kept things simple. I also think, like most people say, that in the key games, he thought deeply. The way we beat Egypt was not just down to an old Egyptian team, it was down to the fact that a coach discovered that he needed somebody who could play the ball slow, so Stam on Tari, he needed somebody who could press high, start a bit of an Asian. John had pace, exploit the lack of pace of an Egypt backline that was included a few 30 or 30 year olds, and it worked perfectly. We saw what he did against Zambia. After the Nations Cup in 2013, we were all convinced that the World Cup dream was gone. And in what Kwesiapia did against Zambia and against Egypt, I think he really did prove that at the highest level, he is still the top coach. Before the GFA announced Kwesiapia's exit three years ago, everyone on the streets of Ghana knew the world. It was a badly kept secret. We were convinced in our minds that when he had done well, um, given all the circumstances that prevailed, and we were convinced, fully convinced, that he had done well. But since the extension of the contract um, to the moment we decided to part company, Remember, we didn't say we were sacking him. We said we were part in company. Lots of things happened in the background that both him and us agreed as part of our severance deal not to discuss in public. So it was the basis upon which we decided to part company. So you want to get the understanding, it wasn't that Kusiapia was sacked. Absolutely yet. not. The statement we released said we parted company, okay. which, mean that, which means that we had agreed to go our separate ways. I thought that we could have done a lot more better in the sense that, you see, if you look at the time I came, mm -hmm. I think we were left, I think, three or four months to the Cup of Nations. I, this, I had something in me you know, to try to encourage our local players and at the same time the local league. So the first competition, I took, I think, four or five local players to that competition. And then secondly, no, I had an ambition that, look, Ghana, we got to a stage where uh, sometimes some of our players, oh, I won't play for Ghana again. And everyone was crying. It's like we had no one in place. So my ambition those when I came the first time was, look, let me bring a whole lot of young guys so that even if, uh, in a year's time, we don't get anything from them by, uh, after a year or two, you know, they will represent the nation. So, um, bringing in a whole lot of players, we were able to go to a couple of nations and go to semi-finals, and then use the same young guys with some few, you know, uh, some few um, senior players, you know, to get to the World Cup stage. So, it's something that I, I think that the next coach after me should have continued yeah. and gave, if he had given um, the young guys, many of them also opportunities, we would have had a whole lot of a pool of players to pick from. And that's, for me, that's what I believe in. It's a, it's a whole nation's team. Yeah. It's not like a club where you are limited to 25 or 30 mm. players. Ghana has got thousands of players, yeah. but it's about giving the opportunity to play. But if you call the players and you don't give them an opportunity to play, what's the essence of calling them in the first place? Because it's not about me judging who is good. It should be all Ghanaians say, okay, oh, this guy came, he played, he did well. So if um, Samajan is not there, oh, he can also play. Hmm. But we've not been doing that. So we are always over dependent on very few players. Kusiapia left and Avram Grant, former Chelsea trainer, was brought in. A pair after leaving Ghana went to Sudan where he managed Sudanese Premier League side Al Khartoum. Khartoum, not as big as Al Hilal and Al Merik, but Apia managed to build a team that competed with them. At some point, he was named manager of the season in Sudan. Initially, it was a bit difficult, but I actually loved the challenge. You know, traveling to another world, you know, another country to showcase what you have. And 
the good thing is, when I went there, my ambition was, look, this, let's take this as a project. Let me build a team for you. And the management were so, so appreciative in the sense that they, that is what they also, they, that's what they were looking for. They agreed and I decided to, in the first year, to bring about 10 young players to the team. And at the end of a year, you know, I had four of them going to the national team, the younger ones. So they understood where I was coming from. So the following year, I added a lot of, uh, I added another six. And then I think the third year, I think by the time I left, we had about 22 young players who have been promoted to the first team. Awesome. You know, the good thing is, uh, out of the, apart from the four who were playing for the national team, Five of them were with the Olympic team, mm -hmm. and then uh, we had, I think, two or three of them also playing for the under 20s. So it was, um, and now in Sudan, if you go to Sudan now, people are talking about the, my cool. team. Yeah. You know, in the sense that they had one club who always put the ball down and play. You know the. Many of the clubs, they, you know, they just play a long one and keep mm -hmm. fighting. But we always want to start the attack from behind and try to end uh, in the post. But the other thing is many of them are really young and the project was for four years. Mm -hmm. So that by the end of four years, you know, we should start achieving, you know, laurels for, for the club. And you won coach of the year as well there? Yeah, um, that's why even when I was living you know, it was a big blow, not to yeah. only my club, you know, the Sudanese Federation and anywhere we went, they appreciated the, the fact that, you know, I've changed the team that they used to know. And you read a lot at some point, they didn't wanted to make you head coach of the Sudanese team. Yeah, they approached me, and but the only unfortunate thing, they wanted me to handle my club and the <laughs> national team as well. Oh, okay. So I said, no, this hard job because the thing is if for instance I'm handling my team and my team is playing the match I can't leave my team and go and monitor yeah. the rest of the uh, players so um, I decided not to you know, take it either I take that as a full-time job or I stay with my club now he's back as Black Stars coach and the nation is wide awake with lots of expectations even though to the average observer, the qualification to the World Cup Finals in Russia looks like an impossible task, especially when one of the toughest to position Egypt as six points clear of the Black Stars who have only E points. For me, I've learned a lot. You know, there are, there are so many things that, where else I was in Sudan, because you know, in Sudan, we don't go out. You only go out in the evening to train and you come back home only watching telly. So most of the time I was sitting back and looking, you know, back at what really went wrong, what went right. And there were so many things that I thought, um, you know, I did wrong. There are so many decisions that I thought, okay, maybe if I'd done it this way, it would have helped. Mm. So it's made me learn a lot and uh, become stronger and a better person, you know. Unlike the first time, because the first time, that was my first experience of being the head coach of a national team. So um, within two years, there's not, not much you can learn. But uh, whilst in Sudan, you know, uh, I was able to look back and make sure that you know, there are so many petty petty mistakes that went on, you know, on and off the pitch that I think um, needs to be improved. Or there are so many things that need to be changed, you know, and it's like you don't need to keep making the same mistakes yeah. again. And there are so many things that, you know, the FA management also needs to change, okay. which have you know, started, you know, drawing the attention to. Mm. And for me, it's about the future of the country, it's not about me, mm -hmm. you know, so. Uh, day in, day out, you know, we all keep learning and um, I believe that um, it's making me more stronger. We thought he was good, he was good. but circumstances, circumstances then, then did not um, permit us to be able to so continue. What has 
a lot has changed. Um, the trajectory uh, has changed. Foreign coaches have come and gone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have also compared the work of some of the foreign coaches who came under him. Um, he has also gone to Sudan. He has done a great job in Sudan, where uh, also runs like Al Khartoum. Mm -hmm. In Sudan, you talk about Al Hilal or Al Marik. Or, you know, these are the top teams in Sudan with big budgets and all of those things. But Al Khartoum, before Kwesiapia had gone, the, how many Ghanaians had even heard of Al Khartoum? Because they were also runs, mm. a middle rank team. He took them from an also run team to take them to the uh, Sekafa level to play in the Sekafa tournament. And I think they got out at the quarter final or semi final. Mm. You know, that tells you that it's made project with the same thin budget, not comparable to what Al Marikh or uh, Al Hilal have but is able to punch above its weight. He played in the Confederations Cup the same. If, for instance, he had had, you know, the budgets that Al-Marik and Al-Hilal had, you would have imagined the impact you would have made. This has given him a broader picture, a broader perspective of what it is. It has also given us a broader picture after Avram had left mm -hmm. and a broader perspective. So we think that with all of these experiences, it, it fits in well. Not only that, but he went before a panel. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Is it, isn't it more important that the same football association thinks he's good enough now for the job? It's, that should be the most important factor. What the football association thought in the past has not stopped the football association from giving him the job now. So it obviously means that the football association have decided that whatever their doubts about his competences were then, that they are convinced that those competence, those, those failings have been overcome, one, or two, that they are not strong enough to prevent him from doing a good job. I would rather read meaning into that because which is the bigger decision that has been made here? Mm -hmm. They attempt to get a technical advisor or they attempt to hand the man a two-year contract worth over $30,000 a month. Obviously, the attempt is, is handing him a contract. That's a bigger statement of faith in his competence than anything else that's happened. And that's the only thing that matters as of now. Apia has gained a lot of experience in the handling of the Black Stars and as of now, he has mastered all the causes of their previous failures in assembling the best for the nation and how to get a squad prepared for the battle. Celasteta is a former coach of the Black Stars and remains the only coach on the African continent to have won the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Bobo, as he is popularly known, has an advice for Coach Chris Apia. First of all, you should look to God first. And thank God that he has, he has returned back to the job he left some time ago. It's few persons that will get this opportunity. So he should do his best. Open his mind. Go deep into the profession. And I remind him that he is capable. I remind him that he is capable and I will wish him well and uh, let him know he shouldn't underrate any situation at all. In this profession, some coaches have worked, worked and reached this stage. This is his time. He has to print his name there. Print his name there, and this is an opportunity for him to do it. The Ghana Football Association has decided to let the main Black Stars coach handle the local Black Stars. The first time this happened was during Coach Milvan Rava's reign from 2009 to 2011. We want to make him succeed, and we see the benefits of it. Tomorrow, when there is a chance between you and a competing foreign journalist to do something for Mother Ghana, People will be able to point to Kwetia Pia and say that when we gave a chance to a Ghanaian, he was able to deliver. Let's give the chance to you. Because, look, mind you, as a Ghanaian, if you go outside to go and work, you start on a back foot. You know why? Because you are a foreigner. Everybody would love to prefer 
that the natives of their country take up these positions first. If there are no hands, that is when you bring in foreigners. So in the same light, let's ensure that he succeeds. And his success story is not only a success story for our national team, but it's a success story for all Ghanaians. Today, if a Ghanaian footballer, you know, is done with his playing career abroad, how many of them are picked up by the foreign teams they might have played for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years to become coaches? They are not. At the end of the day, he has decided that he wants to contribute $5,000 of his monthly salary to the betterment of the fortunes of coaches and old players in this country. If for nothing at all, this money is staying here in this country to give somebody some food to it. Things really went well for both teams as some local players also had the opportunity to get into the Black Stars Team A. Koi Selastete, who is now technical advisor for Ghana Premier League side Liberty Professionals, thinks Kusiapia handling both teams will help in the development of the game. I believe that that will motivate the local league, especially talking about the players, motivate them. And uh, I also believe that at a given time, the local players are more hungrier. They are more hungrier. So when they feel that they have been given opportunity, yeah, it will encourage them, it will motivate them. So uh, I, I believe that uh, it is going to help the league, the, the level of the league, the, the performances of players in the league. And uh, that will also, when the, the level of the game improves, that will also attract people to be paying attention to the game. And that will also be opening opportunities to players. So it, it will be great. It's good because it allows for a seamless integration of both teams. It's no guarantee that because Milo did well, Apia will do well. It's no guarantee because the level of materials would have changed. You've got different matches to play. But a lot of countries have integrated that. I Burkina Faso, this, South Africa, Ivory Coast, Algeria, everywhere, local blasters, coach handles them in one. Because we easily forget these days those games are classified international A games, which means that they matter as much as blasters games. It makes sense that you put one man in charge. Mm -hmm. So for the local players, it's a good thing. For Apia himself, it keeps him a lot more occupied. I think it's a better way of saving money than throwing back someone to the locals again. And, and that would, would help him a lot. Hey! One of the players who got a chance to revive his professional career under Kwisiapia is goalkeeper Fatal Dauda. The man known as Lion was with Ashanti Gold when Kwisiapia made him number one at the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa. Dauda, after that competition, moved from Ghana to join Orlando Pirates in South Africa. How big was he in terms of uh, the influence he had on your career, international career? Well, I think uh, uh, coach is a nice person, you know. Mm -hmm. He gave me the opportunity to play in the AFCON 2013. Yeah. But we have a very good goalkeeper. Squares is there. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Eje is yeah. there. You know, football is about it's about opportunity. Mm -hmm. Not that by then I was too special, more than the yeah, other goalkeepers. But I just had the opportunity to play in goal in that tournament. I remember in 2014 when you were playing in South Africa uh, during the Chan tournament. He came there, spoke to you. So when he left as a Black Stars coach and went to Sudan, were you in contact with him? Well, you I was, always I chatting and having... I wasn't in the team with the... No, not chance. the chant. I mean, when you were playing in South Africa, during the chant, you were yeah. with Orlando Pirates. Sure. There. He came there and spoke to you. That was when we were preparing for the World Cup. Sure, he came, yeah, he came, he yeah. came to uh, South Africa, I remember? Yeah, South Africa. I was, but then I was Rashid, Rashid Smala yeah, was Rashid Rashid met, We met coach. Yeah. We, we made a uh, we shadow at the uh, program meeting, and then yeah. we meet in Pretoria. He was there to I mean encourage him to see how we are doing. You know by then I was having difficult I'm not playing. Mm -hmm. The names were, were worried that I'm not playing. Dauda is one of the players thrilled to have Coach Kusiapia back in the team. Well, Kusiapia has a soft talking, calm demeanor, and that may be for the cameras. 
because when he gets to the dressing room where the steam, the calmness evaporates, leaving Delda and his teammates with a firm and stern coach who requires nothing but a win. Because he has been a former player before, so mm. we, share, we share jokes with him, we laugh together. And then one thing I like about him, if, if I'm not doing well, you tell me I don't do well. Wow. I need me to, I mean, lift up my game. Mm. So, so he was always sincere with you? Sincere. He, he doesn't want me to, although I'm playing regularly under him, but mm. he doesn't give me chances or something like that. Okay. If I made a mistake, he, he put me right, he, he wanted me to, I mean, come up. So sometimes you see players, some coaches will be shouting on players. Not that the coach doesn't like you, he wants mm. you to come up and do your best for, for, for the team and then for yourself. So he's a very nice man. Ghana is a great football nation hungry to win a major trophy. Kusiapia has a difficult job to satisfy mountains of expectations from millions of unforgiven supporters. What are benchmarks? Benchmarks is to try and qualify the team for the World Cup. You're, you're mixing two things up. Saying you want to qualify for the World Cup doesn't mean you must qualify at all costs. And it doesn't mean if you don't qualify for the World Cup, it means Apia has failed. I'm saying if we don't qualify for the World Cup, it will be in no way a reflection of Apia, how bad Apia is as a coach. Mm. Far from that. If we don't win the Nations Cup, that's a different thing. I think the Nations Cup, winning the Nations Cup, is a realistic benchmark. Qualifying for a World Cup, you are five points behind already. It's asking a bit too much of the coach. Yes, he will give his absolute best, I think, to get the team there. But if he doesn't, really, you can beat yourself up about it. So 2017 to 2019, what do you anticipate? Hopefully Ghana becomes a bit more competitive than we've been, a bit more serious. Uh, hopefully we can restore a bit of pride in the national team again. Well, in this first thing, we did a lot. One, um, we gave him the same opportunities as the foreign coaches, and even more. One, we gave him the opportunity to negotiate for his own salary. Two, uh, we gave him all the opportunities where to go, be to go abroad, to go and monitor players, be to have a video analyst to look into selection of players or monitoring of players. Three, even augmenting the backroom staff. Mm. At a point in time, apart from Kweku, who's our video analyst, we brought a video analyst at his own recommendation from Manchester City to add to his backroom staff. And all the things we do, even at a point we arranged for him to go to Manchester City, Liverpool, and all of those things. We've done all of those things. And if we feel that there's any need for him to be given any extra support, we will. If he puts this thing in front of us, we will support him. If he tells us that he needs this thing, we'll do it. If we find that there's also a need for him to do something to enhance his work, we'll also do it. Personally, what do you want to see? change from the old PC up here and the new one? Well, one thing, the only thing <laughs> I would love to see is that he lives in a country where he speaks the language. People know him. He should blank out the criticism from the media. Friends, former colleagues, colleagues who call and say, oh, do this, do that, do this, do that. You should blank them out. And I say it for good reason. When we were on the verge of qualifying for the World Cup, what had happened? We were enjoying a very, very smooth campaign, weren't we? Yeah. Then the, the noise started. Oh, bring in some of the old players. Bring in this person, bring in that person, bring in that person. When some of these players came and caused trouble in the team, we didn't see one of those who made such recommendations. And it's sad eh? when people make such contributions, and as a Ghanaian, in our nature, as people who listen, you listen to advice, you listen to contributions, and the rest. And he didn't do it in a bad way. He did it because it's in our nature to want to listen, to hear second opinion, stuff like that. But you realize that upon second reflection, people have got all sorts of motivations 
for wanting you to bring this person in, bring that person in, you know, bring this person in, bring that person. I want him to stand on his feet like he does all the time. Blank all of those things out. People will talk. They will call radio stations to say all sorts of things. Blank them out. Keep on his convictions like he has done in the past. Be convinced about what he does and follow it. Let God be his guide. He needs their support. He needs their support, which of course I know they will do that. I don't have doubt on that. Yes, need their support. My constitution is only on the ball. I'm not looking at the man. However, there is a sense that Kwesia Pia still has an unfinished business with the Black Stars and his return offers him an opportunity to instigate his 15-year plan which he had hoped would lead to a first Afghan success since 1982. I think what we as a nation should know is that we should ask this question. What do we need in our football now, especially the Blasters? Do we want to build a team? Or we want to rely on what we have. And you see, I keep saying this. Me, I'm a Ghanaian, and where God has risen me, I think it's more than enough. But I'm looking at it from this angle. If I'm even with the Blasters for one month, or let's say for one year, I should be seen to be bringing something on board. And what I mean, what I want to do is to make sure that you see we have every position, we should have three competing players, you know, fighting for the jersey. That's my ambition. You see, when you have that, you don't have, you never have indiscipline in the team. You never have, you know, disunity in the team. You always have the players fighting, you know, to wear the jersey. And once you have players fighting for the jersey, you always get results on the pitch. And so that is my ambition, to make sure we have a lot of players, you know, and I don't want a situation where only Coach Apia is calling. I want Ghanaians to also see that, look, if he's not sick or he's not there, oh, this one can also play. Ghanaians should be able to say that. You see, once that is done, then Ghana, Ghanaians who come from their homes, oh, I'm going to watch this player or that player, because they know what they can do. You know, so that is something that's on my heart, you know, and maybe in a way it's also good that we are um, handling the local blasters. It also gave me opportunity to know what each and every player can also do. So that, you know, it also give them opportunity to showcase what they can do. Mm. Mm. And winning a title too will be something that you'll be looking forward to. I mean, I believe that every coach's ambition, you know, is to make sure that, you know, he wins laurels for either a club or for the national team. And for me, um, our love uh, is something that is on my heart and I believe that, you see, anything that's on your heart and you pray about it, it's, there's nothing that's impossible in the sight of God. And I've always had believed that every step that I take, I rely on my God and, you know, I, most of the time, 100% achieve almost everything. But um, saying that, you know, it's important how we psych our players to go out there and fight for our nation. Once you have that done, automatically players will go fight and make sure that they achieve the, the main aim, which is to win laws for, for our nation. And um, that is my ambition, and I hope God will bless you. My name is Benedict Owusu, and all I can say is good luck to coach Kwisiya Pia on his second coming as Black Stars coach. Mandela! <laughs>